Good evening, Herbert. Good evening, sir. Please do introduce yourself and take five, six, seven minutes to tell us about you and your business. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to Enterprise Uganda for organizing this. Thank you to Enterprise Uganda. I was telling uh, him that uh, most likely Enterprise Uganda doesn't know they trained me. Some know, but most likely they don't know. They don't know they even came to my place so many times for business health checks and kept advising and nurturing me for a long period. Mr. Chichi most likely doesn't know me, <laughs> but you've done well in my business. Thank you very much. I'm called Herbert Magara, the proprietor and managing director of Breadhouse, Breadhouse Group. Breadhouse Group uh, right now has uh, five companies, four of which are bakeries, and one is the holding company owning the bakeries. We have grown to, currently we are employing 274 workers directly in our bakeries. And uh, we have up to 150 outlets, independent outlets. They are not ours, but they are getting from us. And the outlets on average are, are employing two people. That's a brief on Breadhouse. We started, should I go yeah, on? Yeah, go on, please. We started, uh, I started Breadhouse 10 years ago in 2013, May 1st, 2013. And I know those who take our bread now most likely didn't even know we existed then. You most likely didn't know we existed till around 2018. It was a good journey. Like he said, I was designing multi-story buildings, yes. I am a structural engineer, or was a structural engineer by profession. And fortunately, he was even one of my clients, one of my best clients. <laughs> and uh, I'm glad to meet him now in the bakery, as I talk about bakery and business. But I, uh, one question that I'm normally asked is, why bakery and why did I go that direction? And one, I had a passion for it. Two, I didn't like the bread that I was eating. And uh, often I used to bake my own bread at home. Until one day I sat with a client of mine, and uh, my engineer, a client in the engineering sphere, and he told me, how about you are a perfectionist? And I said, yes, sir. Why have you said that? And he said, as a perfectionist, you, you will do better making a product not a service. Make a product. You will go far. And at that point, I thought, bread. I like my bread. I make my own bread. So I went into one and a half years of experimenting. I wanted to make the best bread. Yes, I am a perfectionist. And uh, even the people who were eating my bread didn't know they were my sample space. I was just experimenting. I had bought an oven and taken it home. I wanted the best bread in the country. And I kept working at it, testing every person's bread. If they told me there's a bakery somewhere that is making very good bread, I ran there, bought their bread, tested it. In fact, at some point, uh, when I had started, some, uh, I was making chicken samosas. And someone told me, oh, there are very good chicken samosas in Kavali. You should go to Kavali and test those chicken samosas. I got onto the bus and went to Kavali and tested the chicken samosas. And when I got back to Bread House, I stopped making chicken samosas. <laughs> because I, know I, would, I knew I didn't have it to make samosas that good. The chicken samosas. We make other samosas and I think they're really good. We make up to, we make 56 different products at Bread House, not only bread. However, when I started it, I started it to make bread. And when I started, when we started, or when I started, this was 2013, I didn't have a lot of income to get started. I, was, I had been able to buy my oven, uh, but starting, it was really hard. 
And so I rented a two-roomed space on Chigo Road in Lueza. Not where the current Lueza is, but at the back. Those who have been with us for a long time should know that place. And I ran the bakery for the first one and a half years on losses. And by 2014, August, I, I could no longer run Bread House, so I closed it. Actually, my landlady forced me to close it. To show you how bad it was, she told me uh, I had not paid rent for about six months. And she, it was August, and she told me, just give me the rent of August, and we shall see the previous months. And I looked for rent for August and failed to get it. And uh, August started and she closed. She said, when you get my rent, we shall open you. So I put my car out for sale and it took five months to sell the car. So I was closed from August to December and I opened in December again. After selling the car? After selling the car. Or was it a Range Rover? Ah, uh, no, it was... So you uh, got a lot of money? It wasn't a Range Rover. It was uh, a Toyota Vista. Ah. The other old model. I see. Yes. So it, it wasn't really a real car. Anyway, so you got <laughs> money. <laughs> Indeed, it wasn't a real car. <laughs> <laughs> so you got money, you paid the landlady, um, and opened again. I got money, yes, paid the landlady, opened again. By that point, I had eight workers. And when I opened, I called my workers and told them we are starting again. And uh, five of the eight said... We have families, we have things to do, we cannot stay with you. Your thing is really not working. We are sorry. Three remained with me, and we opened. Um, Ronald says we have only 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Eight workers, five said they had families, they couldn't stay with you. Today, you say you have 200 and? 274. Mm -hmm. And we are talking a journey of 10 years. Yes. We are talking about an engineer who has become the best baker in town. I hope he has become the best baker. Tell us, what would you say we should take away? Maybe I should link this to the question, when you were closed for five months from August, what were you doing during that time? Not, not going around trying to sell this little thing called a car. What were you doing with your time? Well, the car, I had put the car at one of these bonds in Nakasero so that someone could sell it for me, so I didn't have to be there selling. In those five months, I was actually at home. I, I, I was seated at home. In 2014, when I closed, I dropped engineering. I made a certain decision. I made several decisions. One of them was, I'll never do an engineering project again. Oh, reason for that was many of my clients were not paying me. He was a good client. He paid me all. Thank you. <laughs> but many of my clients were not paying. And when I called them up to say, I have a problem, I need my money, everybody had an excuse. So I dropped engineering. I said, I'm going to concentrate on my bakery the moment my car is sold. So I sat at home for those five months. And just uh, to give a sneak peek on how it was, uh, I had moved around to all my friends, asking them to lend me 500000 That rent was 500000 And everyone said, we know you can't pay us. You know you can't afford 500000 to pay back. And only one of my friends said, I, I cannot lend you because I know how things are going for you. They are not good. You won't be able to pay. But here is 100000 uh, Don't pay me. It's free. So I got that 100000 and I locked myself. I stayed home. Even my landlord at home wanted her rent. So I locked the door and stayed indoors the whole day for five months, getting out at 11.30 when I know the landlady is not around to go and buy what to eat. And there was a lady who used to sell an item called finger buns. 
she was selling them 200 shillings. At first, I was eating lavishly. I was eating food of 3,000 shillings. And then I noticed that I had finished the money. Uh, when I noticed the money was getting finished, I started eating finger buns. A lady who was selling finger buns at 200 shillings. So I would go buy two finger buns because I didn't know when my car would be sold. Eat one at night, eat one tomorrow. And I always told myself, a human being, I've watched this, I've had this, a human being cannot die on these grams of wheat and water. So for about two months, I was on finger buns, two finger buns a day. Those who know Bread House, you know we sell finger buns. After reopening, I said, I'm going to start selling finger buns. I'm going to make a pro that product called finger buns. At 200 shillings. Sell them at 200 shillings. There will most likely be someone who needs to live off a finger bun every day. Thank you. Tell me, Herbert. Today, I know that most of the time we get money, starting money especially, from three Fs. Family, friends, and fools. Those are the three Fs that usually finance startups. Now, your friends have dropped off. Didn't you find any fools? What about family? Didn't they support? Uh, no, family did not actually support. A family was disappointed that I had dropped engineering. And at that point, bakery seemed like a losing thing. So I felt so deep about this thing. I knew that if I got one more chance to start, it would last. All right. So at Enterprise Uganda, in the entrepreneurship circles, we talk about the five pillars. Mr. Chichi touched on them. That's the story about financing, but you haven't completed it. So ultimately, was it just the car money that kept you going? And once the car money came in and you paid the rent, have you had any other financing? Secondly, I want to link this into how you work. How do you make sure that your bread is as good as it is continually? Okay. Uh, uh, on the first question about the financing, Actually, it was the car money. At that point, because I hadn't borrowed money from anyone or saved up a lot of money, I only had an oven which I had bought for 3.5 million. I didn't even have a mixer. And actually, Breadhouse didn't have a mixer for five years. We were using our hands to mix. Uh, only that we were making a very good product, you kept coming. Uh, so uh, when I closed, as I said, when I closed, I made certain decisions. One of the decisions I made was I will not borrow and I will never lend. I've kept it up to today. I will never borrow. I will never lend. Mm. And a hand clap for that, I would say. <laughs> I'm sorry to the bankers. Our bankers keep giving us offers, you know, asset financing, what financing, you can do this, equity what. And we keep, uh, I keep rejecting them. They have even begged me to at least allow my workers to get salary loans. And I've told them, if I can't borrow from you, I cannot accept to be a guarantor for 274 people. Mm, okay. Uh, and then uh, uh, the operationally, quality, how do you ensure that? On quality, oh, one thing, what we have done is, or oh, what I have done is, I've made my job to be the job of writing manuals. 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 We have several manuals. And from the very start, when I started, I was with, uh, I just employed one worker. Uh, and we worked together. But when I, and so we were two. But when I employed my third worker, I, had, I employed her so that she could take my place. So that I could start writing manuals so that I could develop my system. And so for 10 years, we've been writing manuals. Now we have my sales manual is 120 pages. Mm -hmm. And my staff follow those manuals step by step. Every person who works in Breadhouse has a manual. If you're in sales, you have a sales manual. If you're in production, you have a production manual. If you're uh, the, the manager, you have the manager's. The manager has two manuals, actually. 
the accountant, she has three manuals. I had to study finance and accounts so that I could make her manual. Um, so that I could make their manuals. Mr. Chishi, I'm beginning to think he should sign up as a call-up consultant <laughs> on systems. You see? And so the manuals help everybody to do what they're supposed to do and to consistently deliver the same quality. The manuals run bread house. Should I ask about marketing or it's a, a, a no-brainer? Uh, feel free to ask, but uh, those who have been to bread house, I have had, I've gotten one question from those who have visited several bread houses. They say, how is it that the person who greets me at the other bread house likes me the way the person at the other bread house likes me? It's all in the manuals. Even when you enter bread house, where they are standing, no, they are not standing there because they have nothing to do. Their manual tells them, stand there. Mm. Even when they greet you, okay, now I'm spoiling this. Huh? When they greet you, the manual tells them, greet like this. And when you answer, dependent on your answer, the manual tells them, what to tell you next. So next time one of them says, go to hell, just know it's in the manual, right? <laughs> uh, no, I really, really appreciate this, that this engineer is not simply developed a product that is a winning product, but he's actually an author. Because by the time you develop manuals that are used by a big team, it means you could write manuals for any one of us here. Let me see. How many of us have manuals in our enterprises that our workers follow? One, two, three, four, five. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Do I need to ask him anything else or has the time run out? I'll ask this. Where do you see yourself in 10 years, and 10 years is very important for me. I keep saying, if you're not okay today, it's okay. But if you're not okay 10 years from today, it's not okay. And your case has just been another example to prove what I believe. But now you're okay. Where do you want to see yourself in 10 years, bread house? Uh, someone once blamed me for not being very... Uh, What's the word? Uh, not adventurous, but uh, aggressive. Someone once told me I'm not aggressive. When they asked me, where do you see yourself? I said, well, 10 bakeries. And they said, what? Why don't you say you'll see yourself running to building bakeries all over the world and trucks flying everywhere? I said, no, that's, that's, what, I, that's what I see. Honestly, that's what I see. 10 bakeries. I see. Surprisingly. Thank you. I think we are going to invite a couple of questions, but my last one is, do you live in your own house now? Good question. Surprisingly, no. Good boy. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, the first uh, five years, 2012 to 2018, were years of learning. I normally tell people, if, if you think never giving up is enough, you're in trouble. You have to be learning. But it was a lot of learning, a lot of learning. Learn this, make a mistake, change it, move on, learn this, make a mistake. But also, uh, so it, it's at 2018 where it's as if we had learned a lot uh, or the majority of what we needed to learn. And things had put themselves in place. The manuals were right. They are now working perfectly. And then we started opening. 2018, 2018 actually we moved to the main road. In those who know Reza, we moved to the main road. Yeah. And our sales, which had been approximately 800,000 when we were on the feeder road, by moving to the main road in the first month, short to 2 million per day. And in the second month, had hit 5 million. In the third month, had hit 8 million per day just by moving to the main road. So I feel sorry for all those bakers who come to me and they say, I'm baking from home. I really feel sorry for ah, them. Location, location, ah, location. It matters a lot. They, they, even those who are better than me, they're there. Yeah. But because they're at home, yeah. they're still at home baking their bread themselves, yeah. baking their products themselves. 
But just because of that. So you'll never find a bread house in a funny location. Never. I have to take the biggest spot on the building. I have to be on the main road. I have to be on the ground floor. I have to be on the side heading home. Okay. If it's not that, I'm not taking your place. Thank you. Thank you very much, Herbert. It was Margaret Thatcher who, in the middle of things, restructuring Britain and getting the economy to work, who insisted that the British high commissions had to be on the high street. I hear you. When I say good boy, I'm not simply saying it. The children would say, good boy, daddy, because I've made a good decision. To decide that you're not going to take your first money and put in a house to sleep in, but instead use that money to develop even more of your business. The big house will come if you still want it. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, before we go, one thing, a decision I took, and it's in the manuals, was that uh, I, would, I would get a salary, and my salary was dependent on the bakery, so each bakery has to pay me a salary. Yeah. And so uh, I think that's why we are building one bakery per year. Yeah. Because I want my salary to keep increasing. Okay. It is good, and it has delayed that, but I think now we are, with my wife, we are on the way to building our house. Congratulations. Thank you. The salary will build the house when the bakeries are many enough. Thank you very much. The first question was on the manuals. How do I conceptualize them? The first time I made a manual, it was only three pages, and I thought I had reached. I, had, I thought I would achieved everything. But I just kept looking at what my staff are doing and where the mistakes are and what I've written wrong or what they have done wrong. And I would write it, in, I would write it down. Even now, I still write inf this, this information in my phone and I update my manuals. So that's how I do it. I remember a time when one of my staff walked passed in front of a customer. The customer had left a gap between him and the shelf and she just came walking past him to go and meet another customer. Straight away I went and wrote in the, in the, in the next money I'm going to, I was going to release, uh, never walk between a customer and their focus. And I described that uh, the focus of the customer is either the shelves, another person, a member of staff, the counter, the what, and I said never walk between a customer and their focus. Up to today when you walk when you're in bread house, it doesn't matter how far you stand from the shelf, they'll walk around you. And we do frequent training. Frequent, frequent, frequent uh, training. We refresh on the manuals. We even act them. We don't just talk about them. When we are training, we act. We say, you're the customer, you're the this, you're the this, you, you're the good customer, you're the bad customer, let's do it. You, you're the cashier, you, you're the server. And then we act it. The second question, is that okay? Uh, so the manuals kept growing. They just keep growing because we keep adding on, adding on and updating. What marketing mix did you come up with to put you back on track? Uh, I always tell people my best marketing style is my is uh, my product and uh, whenever I'm talking with my staff uh, there's a time they asked me they were feeling sorry for the bread house and they, uh, they said why why don't we at least sell the bread tomorrow up to two o'clock the one that hasn't been bought and I asked them uh, how many have you ever had our advert on radio and they said no you, but you've seen the YouTube, right? And they said, no, we haven't seen the YouTube advert. But the signpost, the big signpost on the road you've seen, they said, no. Then I said, us throwing away that, uh, these things that we have not been sold, that's our marketing. Eat them, eat them, that's the price we pay for marketing. We're not going to advertise on TV. And it has worked because every time you enter, you buy our product, you like it. You go and tell somebody else. How often do people talk about other people's businesses? But many people tell me, oh, I got to know your bread because someone told me about it. Because they think it's so good. So the product, we just intensify on the product. And we also, keep, we also tell ourselves that we are not playing a price game. We are playing a quality game. So we have to hit the quality. 
you know our bread is i think 1500 shillings more expensive than other people's bread of course some of it goes to her but yeah, life's like that how much did you remain with after paying the debt good question <laughs> and it's going to be shocking remember i sold that car for six million shillings i i needed money i sold it for six million i paid my landlady at home i paid my landlady at uh, the bakery uh, i paid a few debts i had here and then when it came to opening we were left with two hundred thousand shillings fortunately i had my oven but we were left with 200,000 shillings and actually opening was hard because we, we bought a packet of flour from the neighbor, a kilo of sugar, we went to Cinnabel supermarket, we bought uh, a kilo of prestige, we got some salt uh, and then we started and baked our first three loaves and waited for someone to come and buy them. Uh, and I remember the first customer that walked in after we had been closed for the five months, hustled with life, the first customer that walked in, he looked at, he just looked at me, he looked at all of us, and he said, bread house, bread house, bread house. The most unserious business I have ever seen. You open the way you want, you close the way you want, you open the way you want, you close the way you want, and you think we shall be here waiting for you. Then he looked at me and said, are you the owner? I said, yes. He said, you're the most unserious businessman I have ever seen. Style up. He met me uh, about six months ago, and he, and he was with a friend, and he said, you see this bread house man? If he didn't pay attention to my advice, I'm the one who told him to style up. <laughs> now he's where he is because he paid attention to my advice. He doesn't know what we were going through. I hope he will hear this. <laughs> uh, did you have a family? Fortunately, I didn't. I hustled it myself. So those five months of being alone, I didn't have a family. I was lucky that time. Now I have a family. I hope nothing goes wrong. How did you, how did you go through COVID? Uh, when COVID came, I had Lueza and a bakery in Chitoro. Then COVID hit. Uh, we were allowed to work, but we were not uh, getting as many customers as we wanted, as we could. Uh, I, and uh, I didn't want to lose my workers or to have them starving. So what I did, I opened other bakeries. That's how I opened Impala, uh, because I had equipment that wasn't working, uh, because we didn't need to use all our equipment in COVID. So I, used, I shifted equipment to another bakery, uh, rented houses for them, and they, we went and opened Impala. It's also how we opened Chanja. Yes, so COVID wasn't a loss for us. It was a good chance to expand. Are you able to help me with the manuals or to help us with your manuals? No, we consider those to be our uh, trade secrets, our intellectual property. We do not give it out. Uh, we do not give them out. I'm sorry about that. Are the opportunities of having business with are there opportunities of having businesses with you or doing business with you like franchises? A franchise is a very complicated word. Mr. Chichi may want to explain it. It's a complicated word. And when you do the franchise system, you're kind of legally bound to each other. And I've been reading a lot of, about franchises because I thought I would go that direction. Actually, that was my original intention. But the amount of suing going on between franchisor and franchisee I opted not to go for it. Uh, people open up, but are, we have uh, quite a number of outlets, but they are not our outlets. They are resellers, and they are independent on their own. They are independent. They are their own businesses. There is a the time, uh, Madame Hafsa, her people were giving me penalties because of those outlets, and I kept trying to prove that those outlets are not mine. It was hard work, but I think now they understood Thank you very much. My parting shots. I will go the manual or the system direction. I think it's easier than you think. It just needs one to be diligent on it. 
And when you're diligent, you'll like what you'll get. Please go that direction. You'll like it. Like Mr. Chichi said, I am not stressed. I look like I'm calm. I didn't I look calm. But truthfully, even my employees think that I am a really calm guy who never gets angry. They, they, they blame the managers a lot for being tough on them. But that's because the, the manuals tell the managers what to do. And personally, my part on the manuals is not to be mad at the, at the employees. So it, it, it's, a, it's a good way to go. You'll like it. In fact, when I, saw her, when I saw her walk up, I kept thinking, where have I seen her? Where have I seen her? Now I have remembered. When I was writing my tax compliance manuals, I was using YouTube videos. She was the one. <laughs>